residents of rural Nova Scotia are becoming more concerned with the changes to their water and homes as mink fur farms continue to grow in number and volume. Despite a growing body of scientific studies, the government has done little to assuage these concerns. We interviewed more than two dozen families. Only a few agreed to have their interviews broadcast publicly due to fear of stigma and reprisal for speaking out against the fur farm industry. John Cunningham is an area resident, municipal politician, and business owner. He shared with us his experiences. We haven't swam in that lake. We still go boating in the lake, but we haven't swam in that lake over the past three or four years. Mm -hmm. we have not. But my gut reaction is, oh my God, if we can't swim in it, what's other people going to think? But it's it's funny, it's not green all the time, but that's still in the back of your mind that it's, there's something wrong here. There's yeah. something wrong. When I was first in, elected in 2008, the first question I asked was to uh, an official in the Department of Environment. They said, yeah, we know about it, but that's really not our concern. Go see Department of Natural Resources. So, of course, me trying to help with the residents of the area went to the Department of Need Resources. Uh, well, not really not sure. Maybe you should go see Department of Health. And then that was just a vicious circle. No one ever wanted... Uh, actually, Department of Health told me to go to Department of uh, Agriculture for some strange reason. And I said, what does waterways have to do with agriculture? Oh, we'll go see the Department of Environment. <laughs> so it was just a big... It's almost like a dog chasing his tail. And that really, really frustrated me. And I... We, we, we are, we've been battling that for forever, and we're still battling that today. And from what I see, the government sees this as the, the save-all, because it's a big industry that makes lots of money. But my question is, is, who makes all this money? We always hear big figures of $80 million a year, $100 million a year, even more. But where is this money really going? I don't see the trickle-down effect. Personally, living in this area, I don't see the trickle-down effect to the to the general workers on the farm who take care of the animals, who clean the animals, who build the pens. I don't see the trickle-down effect. Yes, there's a sawmill here that's going because they sell a lot of uh, lumber and stuff to, the, to build the pens, but that's only 20 people. An $80 million business? Don't you think that that would affect quite a few more people than what there is? It'd be, you know, 500 people minimum, you'd think, but I don't see it. I really don't.